plans to come back to northern Minnesota this year? I'm going on a library tour. Do you want your piece of candy? Because I did bring some candy. No? To, no? Okay. Because I thought if it's a quiet crowd. I'm going to have a crowd. <laughs> I am. I'm going all the way up to War Road and Roseau, and you know, I come from a hockey playing family. I was, uh, I will brag. I was a really good skater as a kid, but you know, Title IX just came in to being when I was a senior in high school, which is so odd, considering I graduated in 2004. Um, but, <laughs> so we didn't have, you know, there were no hockey teams. So both my girls uh, played hockey, but I have always been a figure skater, but um, I think if I had been able to play hockey, I'd probably been really a mean, chippy player. Um, <laughs> so I can't wait to go up to Roseau and War Road and just sniff that hockey vibe. And, um, <laughs> but I did, thanks to the legacy grant that we forward-thinking citizens voted on, I got to go up uh, to the mid-north that's not even a term in Minnesota, is it? I went to the Mid-North. Um, I went to Bemidji and uh, all these places, and it was wonderful. I had, I had the greatest time, uh, except I stayed in Black Duck in an American Inn all by myself. I felt like I was in a Stephen King novel. It was a, a snowstorm raging, and the pool stunk like chlorine in any corridor you walked in, but I thought it's not the pool, it's where the dead bodies are being <laughs> uh, put. Um, I see um, the author stalking Susan here, and I went to listen to her, and um, have read Stalking Susan and I always marvel at mystery writers because I could never write a mystery because you would know who did it by page three. Um, <laughs> but I thought if I were, I would have written a book set in the Black Duck American. <laughs> American! Uh, that night it was American! Uh, so yeah, I'm going back up north and looking forward to it. Hoping I'll get some kielbasa. <laughs> if they have it there. <laughs> Any other questions? How are you guys doing? I've been to their book club. And now, in fact, even get to go to their Christmas party. <laughs> I wheedled my way in. Yes? I have a oh, thanks. Um, <laughs> do you have either a best book club ever story or a worst book club ever story? That I visited? Yeah. Wow. Well, I can't. They're here. So. <laughs> no, um, I did go to, uh, you know, I am kind of shameless. I really do like a, a nice big spread at these book clubs. <laughs> and I went to a huge mansion in a western suburb. <laughs> and it was such a big house, I thought, I can put my whole house in there for you. And I was so excited about the food, I just couldn't wait. And so we assembled in their, you know, vaulted um, chamber room, and uh, they passed around some Chex Mix. And I thought, well, I like Chex Mix, but I can't wait. For the and that was it. And so I, I broke the bric-a-brac in that house. <laughs> Um, and, and I was at another book club where they were talking about um, my second book. Um, my second book. Um, Your Oasis on Flame Lake, which is set in a kind of mid north uh, <laughs> locale. But there's a little infidelity in that story, and that, you know wasn't my story, it was just these characters, and, and this woman was so mad at me. She got up and she said, you make infidelity look enticing. <laughs> <laughs> and I really wanted to hear her back story. <laughs> but usually they're pretty genial, you know. <laughs> books, and, but she was, I really felt, she wanted to fight, and even her fellow members were, you know, it was like Muhammad Ali's trainers. It's okay, just settle down. Take a breather. Here's the smelling salt.
thoughts. Um, <laughs> they're usually always really fun. I know in my own book club, I can speak for myself and fellow members, if we, if we feel we don't give a really good, at least an hour's worth discussion on the book, we feel somewhat gypped. And I know there are book clubs out there who really do prefer the social hour over the discussion. And I'm all for social hours, but they have to be balanced, I think, because that's when um, the good stuff starts. And I know sometimes it's really curious, in my own book club, a book that almost everyone may have hated is the book that will bring the best discussion. And it, it will just blossom forth, you know, oh, we'll bring up this point and that point. And I think that's what I enjoy most about being a book club member, is just that opening up of a book. Um, when I visit book clubs, I think I most, it, uh, I, I most enjoy when people tell me what my themes are. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's what I was writing about, thanks. <laughs> Especially if they make me feel smart. I, yeah, I meant to do that. Thank you. Oh my gosh, any from this side of the room? Yes, Lori. Why do you think book clubs are so popular here? Ah, uh, you know, I think that people yearn, in, especially in this world when you can really be in your basement in your underwear and connected to the cyber world, I think we really understand the importance of connecting in the real world. Um, and I was thinking when I was, when I, my youngest, my oldest daughter was little, I lived on a block with um, some women who were also home and, you know, with their little kids. And we got to sit out in the backyard and have that very old fashioned way of, you know, being mothers, like my mother had, with, you know, we just got to sit in the backyard. And, oh yeah, to hear what Harry from next door, to, you know, and just talk about each other's lives. Um, I think my first book, Patty Jane's House of Curl, it's set in a beauty salon that becomes a bigger, a much bigger salon. Classes are held there, all sorts of things happen, and it really wasn't conscious on my part, but. Again, readers have told me that I, I write about community, and I think, okay, I like that. That's, uh, it's not conscious, but I guess I do want to see people working together, living together, laughing together, crying together, because it take, I mean, being solo and going through life is uh, a heavy burden, I think, to bear. So I think book clubs, um, give people that. And plus, it's like a, the bonus is, oh, wow, I get to read a book, too. <laughs> Which is big, you know? So you do ha you have a focal point, whereas mothers who, my mother didn't go to a beauty shop every week because she was very proud of her naturally wavy hair. But um, <laughs> my friend's mothers who went, you know, they had a place of community and they knew who was going to be there every week and, and talk and um, so I just think that we are, we're like dogs, we're like, we're pack animals. You bitch. No, I'm just, <laughs> I'm just I can only say that to you. <laughs> Do I find myself what? Writing with the uh, thought of the audience of book clubs? I don't think so. I think when I write a book, I think of myself as the audience. I think if it's going to move me as a reader, I hope it will move others. But I like to think that I'm uh, you know, a reader with discerning tastes. Um, so I really, I, I really want to make it matter to me, and I feel if, and I can tell if I'm writing a scene that I think, oh, come on, come on, then that scene's got to go because the, the reader's going to feel the same thing, and I don't think as cleverly as you think you can fake that, you know, you, you will get spotted. And a book club who turns against you is a nasty thing. <laughs> 
Yes, Julie. There you go. I'll get so you. Much. You are so welcome. So you're listening to lots of books on tape, and I, I do too, or listen, uh, you know, Audible or whatever. And I've been told that that's not really reading. <laughs> it is. I, I think yet, there is. I want to. I feel like I just always loved being read to as a kid. Right. Um, I guess you weren't really being read to I then. Guess. <laughs> No, I, I've heard that snobbery, and I think I subscribed to that snobbery before I started doing it. But it's it's a different way. I, I think the I love the page. I love turning the page. I love a book. Um, but again, if you're not, if you can't keep up with, and I still can't keep up, even when I'm you know listening to the book on tape. Uh, but there's nothing like a long drive and that. Storytellers, you know, who didn't want to be read to as a kid? So it's, it's I like to be read to as an adult. I, I put on my Dr. Dentons and uh, <laughs> have a little binky, and I'm all set. Your books are very satisfying. Are they? Because yeah. mm -hmm. I know I read two, but they were abridged, and that was before I knew the, you know, book on tape. Um, etiquette, and I knew that a bridge, well, you know, real readers yeah, don't, don't listen to a bridge. Don't do that again. No, but I, I can't listen to them. I tried to listen to the first one, and I, I sounded like an auditioner for the Fargo movie. I thought, you know, to hear my voice is not a satisfying engagement for me. Cause is it? Because in my mind, I sound like Tallulah Bank. <laughs> but then when I hear it, it's, yeah, oh, you're crying out loud. <laughs> Could you wait in the back? Yeah. Um, are your books like children to you, or you love them all equally in their own way, or do you have one else? They are, and it's, I know it's an unsatisfactory answer, because when I hear writers say that, you know, I think, oh, come on. But it's true. I, I really, they, I feel like they're all different. Um, they have their own personalities. But if I did pick one, I would be a bad mother. Um, <laughs> I used to think that the Tall Pine Polka, which is kind of a wild book, I thought that would be the book, if it were a kid, that would be most likely, you know, to have visited um, social services as a teen <laughs> or something. But then the view from Mount Joy, I think now that's the wild, wildest book. Um, so, but they're all, well, they're just all precious. <laughs> and you had a question? No, it's my question, but not. Oh, really? <laughs> well, you'll get the candy because you're closest. Okay. Yes. I am actually working on two books. I'm trying to see if I have the mental capacity, and I don't really. Because uh, <laughs> one's really pushed itself into um, my premier position. But I'm st I have about 130 pages of one and about 40 of, of the other. And I really was trying to see if I could go back and forth. Um, but I can't. But I can't tell you what they're about because I'm one of those. Oh, I can't tell you. I, I don't even. I don't tell anybody really. I just kind of keep it tucked in because I feel like the more I talk about it, the more you know stuff flies away. So. And did I see another hand? I was going to ask the same question. Wow! Something's <laughs> happening here. Yes. What I appreciate so much is your is your sense of humor. Um, in your writing, and I'm just wondering what you do to develop or nurture your humor side. And you, are you the event photographer? <laughs> okay, I would appreciate uh, some some touching up. Yeah. <laughs> you know, if the chin looks a little jolly. Just <laughs> okay. Um, thank you very much. Um, I think. My sense of humor, to me, is who I am. I think it was initiated being the youngest child of three older brothers. And I realized it could do some battle where it was needed. Um, I, my mother and father, I think, both were really 
funny and came from a fun-loving, which is funny because they're both Norwegian, but um, <laughs> um, I just, I don't know that I write comic novels, but I think I write novels from a comic perspective. Um, I mean, certainly there's sadness in a lot of my books because I write about life, but um, my, the perspective I've chosen to live my life to is, I think, comedy because it's easier if you can be laughing when you try on that size. <laughs> that you don't want to try on. <laughs> last question. Okay, last question. Yes, way in the back. How do you write? How do I write? How do you and your regular life together? Oh, um, well, my regular life is uh, a writer. I, when I had to do other jobs, like temp at the Playboy Mansion or <laughs> stuff like that, I would, you know, have to fritter away corners of space where I could write, um, but I don't, I don't have a, you know, a day job and that's my goal to continue because I don't ever want to wear another pair of pantyhose as long as I <laughs> uh, But I try to write every day, but I'm, you know, I try to exercise every day and do I? No, but I try. Um, so maybe in a week gone by I can say, oh, I wrote five times that day. And I didn't work today, but I was thinking, um, that's another thing about books on tape. Sometimes I have to stop it when I'm walking my dog just because I need that thinking time. Um, so I, I'll work usually in the afternoon because I fritter the morning away, you know, doing crossword puzzles and going on walks and stuff. Um, but often work late into the night. And I used to write by hand. I moved up to a typewriter, then to a computer, so I actually do compose on a keyboard now. <laughs> it's real easy. Um, <laughs> remember when Selectrics were something like, wow, you can erase this, right? You don't need that. Why not? Uh, so anyway, um, wish me luck with my pineapple upside down cake, and thank you for being readers, and 